everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Plays Planet Coaster. Apologies for no episodes yesterday. Basically, you can't see it, but behind the scenes, things are very busy. We've been working on another collaborative series to replace Astroneer, and Nick is going away for a while, so we've got an enormous backlog for that. That took up a lot of time in the past couple of days and made it tough to record Planet Coaster along with every single version of The Binding of Isaac that has been released uh, over the past two weeks or so. And um, here we are, back again. Now, you would not believe, and I, I say this not to be insulting, because I'm very thankful anybody still watches. I'm thankful people watch the series to begin with. I'm just a dude with a microphone and a video game and, and apparently a computer that cannot handle the fact that there's 9,500 people in this park. And it's getting a little ridiculous, but um, thank you. Thank you for the support. At the same time, I get a lot of messages you'd be surprised that say, uh, in, in nicer words, they say, hey, hey, dumb man, can you please just raise the price on your Just a Memento stuff? It's supply and demand. It's supply and demand. Of course, how can you, the consumers are behaving rationally to wait in line for hours and hours to buy a $15 snow globe is rational. The consumer is acting the same way a computer program would act given the same parameters. I guess it is a computer program. Look, I may not be famed economist Adam Smith, but at the same time, I did take Econ 100. That's a joke. Well, it's not a joke. I did take Econ 100. The joke is that that doesn't make me an expert, especially because I didn't do very well in the course. However, um, th there's a problem with this simulation. Because if I was a human being, if I, like, I'm this person right here. Who is this? I'm Willie Aguirre. This is the first person I picked up. Heading to just a Memento 9, because of course they are. Underground Worm Colony looks amazing. The queue for Underground Worm Colony looks too long for me. But sure, you know, I'll wait in line to buy a $15 snow globe that has a mass of people surrounding it as if it's the launch of the Beanie Babies. So while I understand and I appreciate... First off, look at this cool motherfucker. Weep! Yep, that's me. Bet you're wondering how I found myself in this situation. Anyway memes but uh spare me yep that's me bet you okay but i understand you're trying to be helpful but at the same time there is a there's a glitch in the matrix here from my perception which is that you know fucking everybody walking in this direction is like rob's redemption looks ace everybody's like i'm going to fucking just a memento this guy's going to jamie fox breaking all the rule but and well actually jamie fox's ride is pretty popular but like damn dude Look at all these people going to Just a Memento 9. So, I I refuse to take 100% culpability for everything being jacked up and busted, okay? The fact that, like, the people want to, above all else, buy a snow globe makes no sense to me. And if you tell me the consumer's behaving rationally, it's a supply and demand situation, oh, why don't you just raise the price of a snow globe to $400? Well, sure, that would probably curtail demand. Actually... Um, it's sensible to maybe go, hey, you know, snow globes? Those are twenty-two fifty now. Crystal balls? Twenty-two fifty. Sci-fi radios? Twenty-two fifty. I'd rather have people get a yellow debuff and go, I don't have enough money to go to this store than get the red debuff of like you know, this place is too busy. They're so trapped in here that they like cannot even to handle their basic biological needs, and to me that indicates that something is incorrect here. Anyway, I think it was the last episode we built this uh, stork roller coaster. Baby delivery service is actually doing just fine. And the queue is popping off, even though everybody said, what the hell's going on with this, you know, you got these rock burgers here. And I say, no sir, no sir, they are not rock burgers. These are clearly rock sliders. In fact, this one is a rock clock slider. You get the clock rock and cider. And by cider, I mean slider. But you can get it with the cider. There's no deal, but we, we have that on tap, so you can order that as well. You just gotta go to Guy Fieri's Milk Shooters, and then you got no problem. Alright, so we're continuing our goal of ostensibly trying to get to 10,000 guests. I think that that will happen easily, which is nice. Um, we're also continuing our goal of actually making sure that our guests do not routinely starve to death or die of thirst while in line to buy $22.50 snow globes, which it looks like... Uh, 
I don't know. Maybe maybe demands slowed down a little bit. Are we not queuing? But I want to get something from just a Memento 9. Oh, freaking... It's a snow globe. But I want to commemorate our special day at the park. No! Go ride a roller coaster. Create an experience that lasts a lifetime. Instead of a snow globe, you're just going to freaking... Crack it on the ground and get glycerol... You know, alcohol analogs everywhere. You gotta clean it up. How do you clean that shit up? It evaporates in like 10 seconds. It's ridiculous. Take it from somebody who's accidentally broken a snow globe on stream once. Like, those things, you know, once they break, it's a real pain in the ass to clean them up. Especially if they got a fuck ton of glitter inside of them. You know what? Let's do it like this. And then we give the facade of this being like one building. And really, this is like, you know, after like a hurricane rolls through town, there'll be like, hey, you know, come by the school gymnasium and we'll give you some free bottled water. These are like emergency rations right now. So these poor people waiting in line in this cosmic cow, and by cosmic cow, I mean just a memento for hours and hours. They need some respite from the elements and from their own, you know, deranged whims to buy a snow cone and by a snow cone I mean snow globe at all costs it's an embarrassment is this really what you know human beings aspire to be I hope the answer to that question is no but I'm starting to you know this this section of the park is like breaking all the rules Jamie Foxx style and also shaking to some extent my belief in a rational human race um, we're just throwing down like what I would consider to be a pretty standard block that handles human needs you know we got uh we got food we got bathrooms we got drinks please tell me that we're getting some yellow debuffs here everything at just the memento 11 is too expensive for me is a red debuff have mercy what do you want from your boy northern lion uh okay well We've taken a hit on guest happiness because we tried to fulfill their needs. Again, I don't mean this to be insulting, but when you say, hey, the consumer is acting rationally, and then you say, well, they're unhappy because they all wanted hats and they can't all get hats. It's like some ignorance is bliss nonsense. I'm so unhappy, I'm on my way home. I don't buy it. Okay, litter, vomit, hunger, and thirst acceptable there's no problem with that I accept that those are you know necessary things and if you if those are happening you should feel bad right now I guess we're just waiting for almost every single guest in the park to walk by a just memento and either buy something or get so pissed that they take their business elsewhere let me speak to your manager well you got me on the line I was gonna say lady but honestly that's offensive you know Men can complain to managers as well. Have I ever complained to a manager in my life? No. I don't know what I would say. That would be an interesting situation. We gotta make sure these vendors are getting trained. Otherwise, you know, they, they got a lot of workload coming in here, dude. Wilbur Lim is not to be mistreated. Nor is Rosemary Grubbs, the new Pipshot Water franchisee. We are making money hand over fist, in spite of the fact that people are not really that happy. I've never, I've never asked uh, to speak to somebody's manager. I have, you know, there's been some situations where I've been a little mad, not necessarily at customer service, but at the way I was treated, particularly with airlines sometimes, you know, you book a flight like two months in advance, and then you get there and they're like, well, we overbooked it, so, you know, I know you chose your seats, but you and your wife can't sit together, and I'm like, well, that's... It's a little fucked up, Air Canada, who I still fly with all the time and generally find their service pretty good. But at the same time, that was a little fucked up. But I don't know. I don't, if I, I don't know if I'd feel comfortable speaking to somebody's manager. Maybe that, that should be like my April Fool's Day prank this year, which is not a tradition I have, but might be good to institute, at least as if, if it's a positive thing. You know, you just get like a candy bar and a soda. Oh, that'll be $4.15. Let me speak to your manager. Oh, James, come over here. This customer's unhappy. Actually, quite the opposite. The level of service I've received here has been superb, and I want to commend your... No, that would also be dickish. Why don't you just do the transaction and move on, buddy? All right. Dude! Demand has 
sort of ceased. These people, here's why they're not rational. Oh, Markiplier bought out the whole stock. Here's why they're not rational. Wait, was he pissed? Prices are too high for me. Oh, he's furious, dude. Here's why it's irrational. And this is, it's the same thing with priority passes. They don't value their fucking time. They'll wait in line for, you know, four hours to buy a $15 snow globe. A $7 difference in price gets to the point where they're like, absolutely not. Like, I will not purchase that. But they'll spend $40 to ride my shitty, uh, you know, log flume here. $30 to ride this freaking log flume. It's making seven grand a month. It's making money hand over fist in a way that is honestly embarrassing. Again, I'm not going to rail on this. I love Planet Coaster. I think it's a great game. I just don't have, you know, I, I, I don't have the utmost confidence that everything in the game from a consumer behavior standpoint is mapped one-to-one -one with how it should be. Either way, um, we actually just hemorrhaged a little bit of guestage there. And that makes sense. Like, our guest... Our total guest basically uh, correlates one-to-one -one with our guest happiness. Not one-to-one, -one, but proportionally. Um, so, you know, guest happiness right now is falling, probably because... I don't know, actually. Um, we had seven things people were mad about before, and we got seven things people are mad about again. Um, maybe it's just falling faster because people, rather than waiting in line forever, they're actually just going up here and then immediately getting pulled out of the line and then leaving. So it, it's just artificially, or rather, it's, it's just speeding up the process of us, uh, you know, bleeding all the people who will be unhappy. How do you feel about $20? This dude has been, or Carol Wisniewski, has been looking at, like, Just the Memento shit for hours. You call that good service? Ha! Just the Memento 11. Then she just rolls up with these people she's never even met before. Hardly seems fair. One, two, three, four, uh, seven again. And... Yeah, people are, I mean, they're losing their enjoyment pretty quickly here, which is a bummer, but at the same time, it's also like, I mean, you did it to yourself. Oh, I want to buy a hat. Everybody else wants to buy a hat. All of a sudden, you can't buy a hat because the hat store is too busy. That's what you freaking get. In the meantime, though, we will, um, you know, continue to add some attractions to our park here. Where is the entrance to this ride? It's like that. So, I'm gonna, oh, we're about to roll over here on the month challenge complete probably that must be like profit based because we made a lot of money last month there you go that is just slightly off center enough to be annoying yeah we got 16 grand last month challenges acceptable again another thing i mean i guess you know as an indicator some of the sheen is worn off why are all challenges worth a thousand dollars Surely, to, and, and yeah, don't call me Shirley, I get it, alright? Surely, you know, make $1,000 a month profit should be worth less from a reward standpoint than make $16,000 a month profit. And it's like, hey, Slugger, congrats on getting promoted to the CEO of Microsoft. Have a gold star. They don't need a gold star. They need a gold car. This already is a 43% Q rating. I mean, this is going to be a problem. What is it? The cube. Let's mess it up here. We're going to call this the freaking... 32-inch Sony Trinitron HDTV. Um, it, it's not proportional. Now, in the end, it doesn't matter that much because, uh, you know, money is infinite for us right now. You know, money is an energy, and it's just so happened to, you know, we've had good luck with, with it flowing into and out of our existence. But at the same time, it doesn't make sense. It just, it, it further indicates to me that, and this is not a bad thing, but it indicates to me that Planet Coaster is intended to be a sandbox more than a tycoon game, which is fine. And it does the sandbox stuff very well. 85%. I can live with that. I don't think this ride's going to be, you know, too well trafficked to begin with. It's mostly just, again, to make it so more people are interested in going to the park. We got 90 
900 people in the park right now. And guest happiness is still good. Um, well, I mean, leaving guest thoughts are not good, but guest happiness is still pretty solid. I just got to get like an audit on these thoughts. This souvenir will look great at home. What is it? My stomach thinks my mouth is sewn shut. What is this H.R. Geiger, you know, at the mouth of madness shit? My stomach thinks my mouth is sewn shut. It's a shame Chief Beef is so busy. You ever waited in line at a freaking restaurant before? I thought that lady had three heads for a second. That was a new world. Okay, well, I don't know. Remember, we used to have way more uh, rest. Why don't you go to a restaurant in a different section of the park, you asshole? You're, you're testing my patience, Raoul Cotter. Welcome back. Your mouth thinks your stomach's on shut, or vice versa. Welcome back. I've run out of money for 32-inch Sony Trinitron HD TV. Rosalia, J Lo, Anthony. Of course, the nomenclature makes perfect sense. I would never call that into question. Um, look, you know what it's time for. You're not playing the cube music anymore. This is what it's like when planets collide! No, obviously. Or maybe even... Beautiful. Um, let's look at how our, our new coasters did last month. Probably in the next episode we'll just build another coaster. Because, honestly, that's... I think all we are going to need to do in order to push the demand high enough that we get over, um... That we get over uh, 10,000 visitors, even if guest happiness plunges a little bit. If we ever need to get to 10,000 for like, you know, to me, f for me to feel like I'm validated or something, pretty sure that all we're going to need to do is actually um, delete all of the gift shops. But I would rather, it just makes me feel better knowing that the gift shop exists. Because a park, this is like, you know, is being a prime minister or the president of a country. Hey, thanks for building the interstate, Eisenhower. Why is traffic so bad, right? Like, we we want to. We I feel an obligation to provide this service as the owner and operator of this theme park. When you come to a theme park, you expect chief beefs, you expect hot dog squads, pip shot juices, you expect some extreme milk shooters, you expect an exorbitantly priced water ride, you expect a mountain to rise out of planet Earth. Is this thing still making money? Yes, it is. Oh, like hand over fist. Don't mind if I do. And you expect a just a memento. Or maybe multiple just a mementos. That's the only truths I hold to be self-evident. At least Solaire's trampoline has lost a little bit of its uh, luster. So I feel like it's my responsibility to provide a service to these idiots. And although they cannot manage their own time and demand and desires well enough to understand that maybe I shouldn't be waiting in line for 20 years to the point where my stomach thinks my mouth is sewn shut in order to buy a fucking radio. It's the year 2017, you're gonna tell me you're so enamored with the sci-fi radio? What are you gonna listen to? Rick D's in the weekly top 40? All right, in the end, I'm not actually that mad. Nobody's gonna ride this, I think, because they're just gonna they're gonna be like out of money, I think. That was the most Canadian my accent has been in a long time. Now here's the real test. We have a great kind of like roller coastery section right here that's actually getting decent traffic. Like um, Jamie Foxx breaking all the rules made two grand last month. Pretty good. Um, the Steve Miller band lost sixty-five dollars last month, but I don't recall. It might have been broken down. Now the baby delivery service. The queue for baby delivery service feels so long. It's five minutes. Stop giving my generation a bad name. Oh, I can't look at my cell phone for ten. We're not like that, but you're making the news reports seem true. So what is your boy gonna do? Well, it's very simple, in fact. I am going to make an ambitious roller coaster that is going to intersect and come around, and the queue is gonna be right here. Is that genius? No, it's probably moronic. But if I can get it to actually work, what the fuck is the g loc g lo b -lo. Pete Rad, go my can die. Where is, um... 
It said it was launched. These, okay, launched hydraulic, launched torque. So this might use the same style of, uh, of track. Or the same style of coaster in general that, um, the Daytona, aka the Coldplay simulator uses. So, you know, don't be surprised if this ends up being a little janky. But we're going to build it at a slight elevation. And the reason is that I should be able to come back to it and build the queue out from it. That might even be taller than necessary. But I need the track to not intersect at ground level. Or we're going to have, like, some serious problems. Standard track. Standard track 2. Linear synchronous motor. I am in over my head. Dual direction. Stops the train, launches it backwards, and then when the train passes back over it, boosts it in a forwards direction. What the fuck? Magnetic brakes. Okay. Let me think about this. Stops the train, launches it backwards, and then when the train passes back over it, boosts it in a forwards direction. L hear me out here. I have an idea. We got the linear synchronous motor. Take them up. And take them up pretty high, because I've got an idea. We're going to start the test here. I'm going to create, you know, the county fair bowling ball game that is designed to take your money, but instead is not going to take your lunch money. It's just going to take your lunch. So we're going to we're going to raise you up real freaking high. This ain't no baby delivery service. This is a ride for no kids allowed. This is adults and teens only. And then you're going to fall down here. Wait, no. Okay, wait, wait. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have a little dip. Like this. You're going to go 45, then you're going to go 60 for like a second here. And we're going to level you out. And this is where I go hear me out. Because it's going to seem like I have lost my mind. I'm just going... I know nausea gets like... Amped up to a ridiculous degree. If you just have them go like, you know, 60 degree down into zero degree. Um, obviously, we need to make the, the climb on this faster as well. They were climbing. Like, what happened? Now, what I'm thinking is... What if you have them stop here? And then it's going to launch them backwards. And then it's going to launch them forwards. And what do you do on the forward launch? Well, it depends on the speed of this piece of track, I suppose. So let's take a look. Oh, hell yeah. Just, just fucking launch him, dude. Can they not... Does this stop climbing at a point? I might have bunged it up a little bit. No, this is all linear, synchronous, you know. I think this is the equivalent of the lift hill. Okay, get cranked on. All right. Work with me here. Work with me. I guess the idea is you probably don't want to launch them like this because they're just going to constantly accelerate until they hit 100 miles an hour and then everybody on the ride is going to die. They're going way too fast. And then they are all killed. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, this is where we put down this. And then, like, once they get hit by this, I immediately afterwards want to launch them through, like, something like that. If they can... If they can do it, you know? Like, if they can make it work. But I don't want it to be like that, actually. I want it to be, um... I wanted to spit them out like Cobra Head style. What the hell is this? Where do you end up on that roller coaster there? Like, um, yeah, something like this roll right here. But, like, uh, let's be real. They're probably not making it through that. Something more like this. The idea is, you know, and this might be a terrible decision, but at least it's novel. Um, we're going to send them up, and then they're going to get dropped. And this is going to amp up the nausea factor, like, ridiculously. They're going to touch this thing. It, like, did not slow them down at all. 
<laughs> Disregard. <laughs> Alright, well, you know, I'll tell you what. We'll just build this coaster the same way I build every other freaking coaster in the gosh darn game, which is, uh... Yeah, okay, instead of this, we'll throw you for, like, a slightly larger drop, as you might expect. Take you down to the 22-degree angles there, where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. You're gonna be going pretty flippin' fast by the end of this. You're also gonna collide head-on with this. Yeah, you you will be killed. You, they crashed right into the strut there, which was beautiful. Um... Kind of want to throw them into like one of these, but it's gonna definitely intersect, huh? Okay. Well, then we should we should actually keep them up a little higher, which might be good for their fear stat to begin with. Although I think that's gonna be pretty nauseating there. I mean, we want to throw them like, dude. Well, at least they they cleared it this time. You know, you take what you can get. Um, we want to throw them like something like that. And I think, as long as it's less high than the actual, um, than the actual lift hill, they should be able to make this. This construction will continue into the next episode for sure, by the way. So I'm thinking, like, nausea is gonna be pretty bad, like, right there. That's where you lose your stomach. But then they kinda, they come back into the green through this element. Like, the pre-programmed elements are so, uh... So nice. We are in the yellow fear for a lot of that, I'll, I'll admit. Um, I think what we're going to do is maybe come back here and throw in like a like a little trim break section. I, I still think they'll be able to make it. Um, and then, of course, they're going to like hit the wall here. So we would rather have them, if possible, do like a, a cutback turn. Or an over overbanked, rather. Yeah, that, I mean, you could do that. They will all be killed. Stats are better on this, provided they can actually make it through that second loop. And they can. All right. If they will actually survive this turn, I will be extremely pleased. Because it should make them throw up to a degree that is disgusting. And how do we do that month? Uh, it said we made- Oh, we're over 10,000 guests! That's amazing! Uh, we're gonna continue with this series, at least for the foreseeable future here, but, uh... It's awesome that, uh, we did accomplish our soft goal of getting over 10,000 guests. Every thousand at this point is, uh, is a blessing, man. Every extra thousand, I should say. So, we don't want Nausea to be in the yellow for that long, but... So be it. Life goes on. Um... And it greens out pretty quick here. Yeah, I was gonna say, nausea on the cutback, or the overbanked, pretty strong there, so we're just gonna axe that. But we do need to find a way to, to curve them without them dying. And it's not gonna be possible. <laughs> so at least, it's not gonna be, yeah, like, okay, I'll tell you what, if you can, if you can handle that, then by all means, if you can survive this, you are the hardiest guest that we have ever had in this park. And that gives us a way to get the rest of the coaster done without completely compromising, um, you know, guest safety and happiness. Nah, it's still pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, it's still really bad. Nausea actually gets like into the 13s. That's gonna do it for now though. We've got a debugging process to do with this ride. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.